Welcome to Technology with Mike. This show is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network at techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here. Today's podcast is brought to you by audible.com. Get a free audiobook at audiblepodcast.com slash techwithmike. Over 70,000 titles to choose from for your iPod or MP3 player. Visit audiblepodcast.com slash techwithmike for your free book today. And now for your host, Mike Tartaglia. It's time for Technology with Mike. From Central Massachusetts, I am Mike Tartaglia. Welcome to the show. I'm here to make technology and the internet easier to understand. This is show number 71 for August 8th, 2010. Thank you, everyone, for listening and downloading the show. I really do appreciate it, subscribers and all that neat stuff. Uh, I really do I really do depre- appreciate it. Um, you can contact us via email at techwithmike at gmail.com, and I will respond to your email. That's one thing I, I really, um, really make an effort to do is to respond to all email that I get. Um, might not be right away. It might be 24 to 48 hours, but I will respond. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash techwithmike. You can follow us on Chumley, the new social media super site at chum.ly slash mike. And visit our Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash techwithmike. You can subscribe to the show via iTunes or the Zoom Marketplace or other great, where other great podcasts are found. Um, you can visit past shows on our video site at techwithmike.mevio.com. And you can also leave us some, sh- um, some comments, um, topic suggestions, um, or, or just some tips that you might want to share with li- other listeners. Um, you can leave a voicemail for us at the phone number 508-372-0123. That's 508-372-0123. Three seven two zero one two three, and um, uh, I will uh, I will put whatever you have. I'll, if you if you if you don't mind, I probably would. Um, if it's a tip or something, I might put it on the show. Might let the voicemail um, be listened to on the show. So just keep that in mind. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I got a new voicemail box. We're actually using Google Voice, which brings me to uh, my first topic today. Um, I'm. I'm Today's show is just with me. I, I didn't have any guests on for today. Um, I'm going to try to, um, you know, move around a little in the show in regards to having guests one show and maybe me talking another show. Because I remember I used to do this, um, do this show, just me talking, always just me talking, and uh, I wasn't too comfortable with it in, re- in the respect, you know, maybe people don't want to hear me just talk all the time. So there's going to be some shows where I talk the whole show there's gonna be some shows that i have guests there might be some special shows that we have a couple different guests on um so i'm gonna try to mix it up a little to make the show a little bit more uh, interesting to to the viewers and the listeners um so first thing i want to talk about is and i do want to apologize for my my um my delay in sending out or writing up the iphone review i have uh, most of it written now but I have a few things that I'm trying to figure out on the iPhone in order to um, to write something accurately, at least in my opinion, accurately. So be patient. Um, I I did get a couple of emails from people saying, you know, where's the, when are you gonna bring the rev- review out? And to those people, I'm sorry. I will um, I will publish it soon. Trust me. <laughs> I gotta gotta finish writing it been a really busy time i haven't had a show in a couple weeks so maybe three weeks i think the last show we did was the fourth of july so yeah we will um we will get get this thing moving right along summer's almost over okay so um not so current news headlines i wanted to talk about this about a week or two ago but i didn't have the show but i do want to let people know is um i've talked about google voice on previous shows at voice.google.com and um, you know, I use Google Voice for the show and for my personal um, personal phone number. It's a great um, great solution. Well, here it is. They got they've gone public. It used to be in beta for the longest time, 
Um, here's a story. It was um, originally called Grand Central at grandcentral.com. And then Google, of course, went out and saw this technology and they said, okay, well, we need, we need to buy that. We need to bring that in and, and develop it for ourselves. So they bought Grand Central. And then um, I guess Grand Central at the time was in beta. And they stopped all beta after Google, vo after Google bought them. So um, I couldn't get, never get into Grand Central or uh, Google Voice. But we, I finally got in a, you know, probably like a year ago. I've been using it ever since. And now they've gone public. So anybody can go to voice.google.com. You can use your regular Google account, uh, your Gmail account or whatever. Sign up. You get a free number. You can, you can map, to, map it to all of your phones that you have. You have, your, you have a mobile phone. You, you might have you, your phone um, and then maybe your spouse's phone, uh, mobile phone. Then you have your home phone. Then you have your work phone and blah, 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 blah. All the phones, you can just have them all ring at the same time or you can schedule different things. Um, I did have a show briefly about Google Voice. I might, I might even do, if, if anybody's interested, I might do um, some tips for Google Voice in the future. So uh, keep a lookout for that. But go get it. Go get your free number. It's a really cool service. And it's free. I could not believe that. Um, anyways, so that's good. Um, so I want to talk about, right now, I want to talk about um, some, everybody that's been listening to the show probably already knows, I, I have an iPhone 4. And that's the thing I'm writing a review for. I also have an iPad. And, um, and with those come a lot of apps. I buy a lot of apps. Well, I mean, I get a lot of free apps. I've, I've spent plenty of money on apps themselves. And I just want to go over a, like a three new apps that I got recently. Um, and they're really cool. Um, I grab my iPad just in case I have to show them on the show. Um, so one app I have for the iPhone and it's very interesting. Uh, it's a company. Um, what what are they called? They're called. Uh, I forgot what they're called, but they were bought recently. Uh, well, it's a company that made an app called. Oh yeah, it's, the company's name is Siri. S I R I. Well, well, that's the application name. And recently, um, Apple bought them. So that makes me wonder what they're doing. Um, they bought the app. But what what um. What Siri does is um, is actually really cool. If I can get this up on the website here uh, on the um, on the video, I will show you where is it. There, nope, that's not it. Okay, you know what? I'll do it over here. Um, hold on, I'm gonna get it up on the screen here. Okay. So there it is. That's Siri. And what it does is it it do, it's your personal assistant pretty much. Um I tried I sent these people an email. I tried to get them on the show. I haven't they're probably not going to respond just just to the fact that they were recently purchased by Apple and they're probably working on some stuff. But it's a free iPhone app. Um and if you want to if you want to um, find out where is the, um, oh, they give you examples around the screen there. It goes, uh, where is the nearest Starbucks? If you say that into the application, it'll find the nearest Starbucks. And it will map it out for you and all that neat stuff. If you want to um, find out what's playing at the nearest arena, for instance, um, I'm near the DCU Center in Worcester, Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, uh, if I want to say what's playing at the DCU Center... It will um, it'll give me a list of all events that are going to go on, so that will go on you know in the near future. Um, very interesting application, um, and it's interesting that Apple actually bought them. I'm not sure what they're planning on doing. Maybe they're going to integrate it into their phone. Um, who knows? Um, I mean, the latest scoop on there is uh, uh, well, that was back in April when they bought its voice technology. Well, it, it, keep your eyes open. Um, I'm gonna try to get them on the show still. See what, see if they can do that. That'd be great. Uh, okay, so the other app I want to talk about, if my mouse would work on the other side here, which doesn't seem to be working. Okay, there we go. Um, is oh, this is off. This this app is awesome. It's called um, Flipboard, and it's brand new on um, on the iPad. And I'm gonna I'm gonna power it up here. I'm going to let people see this, but um, 
It's called Flipboard. And what it does is it creates from all your social streams and all the different things you want you you're 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 viewing out there on in the social media like Facebook or Twitter or or any news blogs or whatever, it puts it all in a magazine format. And what I mean by that is um it's gonna be a product I'm gonna talk about later. Um let me show you here. Hopefully my microphone will follow me. Um so here these are all different things, um, like different Facebook things. Like here's face. Oh, you can't see it. Here's Facebook. It's a magazine at your fingertips from all your different social sites. So um, here's uh, one called Flip Flip Gaming. So it's it's something from Flipboard that I actually created. But it's all news about gaming. Um, it's really cool. Uh, the, the stuff you can do. Um, I actually added the if I can get this over here the tech with Mike. Not sure why. Um, South Park showing up. Oh, it's a retweet. So this is the Twitter feed from Tech with Mike, and and it sh goes around and it shows different things that that have to do with what what I've tweeted, or who tweeted me. Um, they even have uh, Flip Tech. So because I'm interested in technology, obviously I have a tech show. Um, so they they show you different things in tech. So I mean the the. So the latest news there is Mark Papermaster at, and Apple part ways, pos possibly due to the iPhone. They're saying, so who knows? Uh, who knows what's going with, on with that? So um, yeah, Flipboard, really cool app. I was using um, I was using an app before for my news called Early Edition, um, and it's really cool. It actually gives you a um, I'll show you that too. Gives you an interface like um, like a newspaper. I think it's loading it now, but um. Let me get to the beginning here. Yeah, so there's there's a newspaper looking page. I it's it, it's pretty cool. I liked I liked I liked the early edition app, but the Flipboard really blew me away. And it's and it's getting um actually got into the beta. For, I, I think it's the beta. Um, really cool app. Uh, so so go check that out. It's it's free. It's free, of course. A lot of things are free in this world. Who says things aren't free, right? Okay. The next app I really, really like, and I can't really show it on my on my um, on my uh, iPad on the screen, but what I can tell you about it, it's called it's called Good Reader, and I actually had to pay for this app. I think it was two or three bucks, doesn't matter. Um, but what this does, actually, maybe I can show it. Let me see here. This allows you to open up any type of document, be it Word, Excel, PowerPoint. I'm not sure PowerPoint, but it, I'm probably, it probably does. It does text files. It does PDF files. But the really the, the kicker of this, this is the cool thing. You can actually, um, I can't, I'm not going to be able to show it because I got some documents on here I can't really show online on, on, the, on the air, sorry. Um, so um, what it does is it allows you to, 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 you can manage files on here. You can transfer files. This is, this is the best feature I've ever seen. You can transfer files. From anything else that's any other machine that's on the Wi-Fi network that you're on, you click the little Wi-Fi button on on the app, and then you go to a, a URL. It's usually um, the IP address of the iPad. It will tell you on the screen when you go to it. It will um, go to the IP address of the iPad, and then you put a port number. I think it's like uh, colon eighty eighty or something like that. And then your desktop will connect to your iPad, and you can transfer any file to it, and then you can view it later. Um, it can connect to different types of servers. It can connect to um, Dropbox you know, if, at Dropbox.com. Connect to your Google Docs um, documents, so you can go view them all in here. Download them all. You can view them. Really neat app. Uh, I, I use it all the time now at work. Um, we're doing this major project that I have probably like. Uh, what do I have here? I think I have um, 14 documents for installing this um, what we're doing at work we're installing some applications it's 14 documents to do this and I have them all right on my iPad and um, um, I'll show you briefly what this looks looks like those are all my documents right there and um, uh, really it's really uh, interesting I can just open up a document and flip through it just like um, an ebook I'll show you what I'm talking about I'll open one up and uh, so I can flip through just like I was flipping through an ebook, and the cool thing about it too is when you're um, when you're in different applications. Say say you're in um, uh, what can I give you an instance? 
if you're in some application that wants to view a PDF file, you can actually there's a little usually a little button at the upper right of that application saying open in. And usually and you can choose either iBooks if it's a PDF file or you can choose Goodreader. So that's cool too. And it when you choose Goodreader, it automatically puts it in there and it saves it in Goodreader until you want to remove it. <clears throat> uh, interesting app. First one I've ever seen use the wireless technology um, in an interesting way. Okay, so those are the the, the recent apps that I've used um, in uh, on the iPad and the iPhone. And I'm actually going to do a show um, on my top ten different types of apps, like uh, top ten. Oh, probably should show the video now. Sorry, um, I'm going to do a top ten like um, games. On, on your iPhone or iPad, top 10 um, productivity apps, the top 10 location service apps. So keep an eye out for that. Those will be different shows I do. So I uh, hope, hope, um, hope you come and listen to those or watch those. Okay, so now I want to talk about a couple of different gadgets that I've received or that I've gotten lately. And they helped out a lot. Well, one's really fun gadget and the other one helped out a lot. <clears throat> so uh, let me give you a scenario. Well, let, let's start off with this one first. I I was uh, I've been looking for um, uh, a digital picture frame, a digital photo frame to put in my to put in our um, living room so we can see photos of different things, you know, of our kids, of our of our dog and cat and whatever family. Um, and that was, but I but they they were always too expensive to get a decent one. In my opinion, a decent one would be about one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, and still, I didn't want to spend that kind of money. But recently, Woot, if you go to Woot.com, they have deals every day. They sell things um, one, one a day. I believe Amazon recently bought them. <laughs> Everyone's buying everybody. But there was a, there was a special deal for um, this Tos Toshiba digital picture frame. <clears throat> and uh, the model number, I think, well, hold on. Let me see the model number. Is, uh, let me see if I can find that. Okay. I got the. If I can get a, untangled here. I got the. Um, the model is. <laughs> you know, put the model number on it. Oh, the DMF one zero two XKU. And this is what it looks like. This is this is the. Um, this is the actual box it was in. It's a huge box, <laughs> but the cool thing about this digital picture frame, okay. Well, there's a few different cool things that I, I'm really having fun with. Um, well, my main problem is I don't want to have to put pictures on a, th you know, um, on a thumb drive and, um, and plug it in the, I mean, plug it in the back on the side of the, um, device and stuff and download them and all that neat stuff. I want something that I wanted something that was, um, Wi-Fi certified, Wi-Fi compatible. So it can hook to your network. You can download different things. You can transfer to it. <clears throat> this does that and plenty more. Here's the here's a little device right here. Um, I don't have it plugged in around the power cords upstairs, but um, this is it. It's a 10 inch screen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful display. It has one gigabyte of internal memory. It does Wi-Fi, um, BNG. Um, it it does uh, it does it, it does sound and, and movies and stuff like that. M MPEGs. The kicker is it uses. Um, um, Picasso web albums from Google. You can have the three accounts with it, and, you, and any pictures you put over there automatically get viewed on this picture frame. And um, there's a software called, um, or a service called uh, Frame Channel at FrameChannel.com. Go there right now, sign up for a free account if you're if you're if you're into photos and stuff like that. Because what this does, and I have actually Frame Channel application app on my iPad. What this does is it aggregates all your favorite places like um, Facebook, Picasa, Photo Bucket, WebShot, Smug Mug, Getty Images, all into there. And then this this picture frame and the iPad app, which will be in one of my list of favorite apps, will aggregate them all and, and it will come to your picture frame automatically over Wi-Fi. So... And, and, and if you remember, I did a, um, I think I did a show, I did do a review on the iFi, um, what's it called? The, the iFi, all right here, the iFi um, SD cards, 
that um, that what what happens is you uh, it'll automatically transfer your pictures to Picasa or to wherever you want when you, when it gets in your in Wi-Fi range. So what happens is I take my pictures with my my Nikon D40 and when I get home, I leave my camera on and it transfers everything to Picasa. And 30 minutes later, all those pictures I just transferred to are on my picture frame in my living room. Really cool technology. Now, the, the, this, this picture frame, it does that, but it does all the basic stuff that a typical picture frame do. And I'm bringing everything down here. My, my desk is all over, all over the place right now. But it also has the ports. And actually, I'll try to show this on the, on the other video here. Let's see if this will work. It has the ports like, um, I can't really see them. Man, you know what? I can do it this way. It has the ports on the side. Mm, I still can't see them. But, let me get some light in there. There you go. So it has all those, all those ports like your SD card, your USB, and, um, and whatever on there. And that, um, that allows you to put your SD cards in if you wanted to. Or your memory sticks or, USB, or, your, or your thumb drive or... Oh, it does. It does SD, SD, HD, HC, does multimedia card, does XD, picture card, does memory stick, memory stick duo, and a USB memory stick. <clears throat> um, it's cool. And the picture frame also has um, touch-sensitive controls. I got it. I think it was under under $100. I think their, their suggestive retail price is like uh, $200 at Toshiba. So I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't pass that one up. So, uh, yeah, so digital picture frame, that was one of my new gadgets, and I think my, my, my wife loves it. My wife loves it, um, that the fact that um, you can actually send an email. So I can tell my parents if they want to send pictures of something, someone in the family, or, or if someone wants to send a picture to us to share with us, all they have to do is they send it to our, you get, you get your own email address. It's your username at framesend.com or something like that. And you, get your, and, and you have to allow them to be able to do it, so not anybody can spam you. Um, but it sends a picture. To, they send an email with the picture attached and it goes right to your frame, your picture frame. I mean, my house is like technology house. Everyone loves coming over here looking at the little gadgets I have. So, um, so that's the thing. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't spend any, any more than 100 bucks on a picture frame, to be honest with you. That one was, that one was, that was a great deal. I couldn't pass it up. I should have bought two. I regret, I regret not buying two. <clears throat> so that's the picture frame. Now, here's another thing I found out really, really, really cool, okay, is, um, okay, so here's a scenario. I got my iPad, right? And if you were one of the millions of people that purchased the Wi-Fi only iPad when it first came out, because remember, when the iPad came out, they had the Wi-Fi first and then they delayed the 3G, so you had to wait if you wanted the 3G. I was too anxious, so I bought the, um... <laughs> As usual, I bought the um, the Wi-Fi only one, but I I was kicking myself after after the fact when the 3G came out. I was like, man, I really wish I could be able to access my iPad and any internet from anywhere. It really drove me crazy. I was almost ready to go sell it and go buy the 3G, but you know what? I would have taken a big hit on on the price on on the money I lost. So I'm thinking, what could I do? To still get what I want. I mean, I'm usually near a Wi-Fi hotspot. If it's at work, if it's at home, if it's at Starbucks. Um, even I think even at McDonald's. If you're near a McDonald's, you can get Wi-Fi. Not that I go to McDonald's. But uh, <laughs> trying to eat healthier nowadays. But, no offense, McDonald's. Your food is great. But the the um, I used to eat the bad stuff. You know, the, the, the high, high fat content. And that was bad. But I lost a lot of weight. Yes. Okay, anyways. On to the my um, iPad dilemma. So I had the Wi-Fi only. And I think, um, I'm not sure what the price is of the 3G. I think it's like $800. I paid, um, what, $500 for this or something. And, um, and I'm really happy with it. Don't get me wrong. But I really wish I could have the all connected type of thing, you know. And, uh, and so what I did is I had an idea. You know, the places like Verizon, Sprint, um, there's a place called Virgin Mobile here that has a thing called a MiFi. And you want to know what the MiFi is, I'm sure. <clears throat> well, the MiFi 
I can get this on the screen. It's a little portable Wi-Fi hotspot. So what this does is it allows you to have up to five devices, computer, console, like a DS console, um, could be an Xbox console, I suppose, um, a laptop, a iPad, an iPhone, all be using its wi this as a Wi-Fi router. So how do you, so how do, you do that? It uses, um, this particular one from Virgin Mobile uses the Sprint network, the Sprint 3G network. So it's almost like having a cell phone, but not the phone. It's just the, um, oh, it's almost like an iPhone, but without the phone part. It's just the device. There's a battery in here. Let me see if I can get the battery out um, uh, this way. There's a battery in here in the back, just like a cell phone would have. Um, and I just turned it on. And uh, it is pretty much, it's a Wi-Fi hotspot. So I'm like, wait a second. I can take this, use it on my iPad. The device itself, okay, now you can, there's two ways you can buy it. You can buy it from Verizon, which I didn't do. Then you can buy it for them from like $99. And, but you're in a two-year contract. And I am so sick of two-year contracts with these, with these, um, these, these carriers. <clears throat> so, but then I saw this. It was $150 using Virgin Mobile's, um, as a carrier, and then it's also using the Sprint network for for the for the three G, and that's one hundred fifty dollars, no contracts, um, twenty dollars a month for three hundred megabytes, and they, they don't overcharge you if you go over. You just I guess the device just stops working, and you can you can add money to your account, which is cool. Um, I think you can buy ten dollars a month for a uh, hundred megabytes, but it only lasts for ten days, which actually. That might be a good deal too. I might come to think of it. Um, so no contracts, twenty dollars a month for three hundred megabytes. And you know what? If one month I don't want it, I don't have, I don't have to have it. How cool is that? No contracts. Thumbs up to Virgin Mobile for doing this. I am really impressed. It saves money because I don't have to be in a contract and I don't have that early termination fee crap. Um, part of my, part of my language. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm just fed up with all the contracts and stuff. Um, and you know what? My, my next phones, I might save up a little bit to just buy the phones outright and I'll be like, no contracts for you. So that's my rant about contracts. Now, I just wanted to mention one thing about our sponsor, Audible.com. They are the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. They have over 70,000, probably over 75,000 titles. I don't even know. It goes up all the time. But they have tons and tons of titles to choose from to put on your iPod or your MP3 player. Um, books from all different types of genres. So listen to an audiobook while you're driving to work. Your commute, um, you are, you're commuting to work or you're in the gym or you're, you're outside jogging. Anywhere that you couldn't really pick up a book, a physical book and read, you can listen to a book. It's awesome. Um, I listen to a book while I'm, while I'm at home, you know, working out in, in, um, on the elliptical machine and the treadmill. It's awesome. Go get, you can have a free book today, but I want to tell you what book that I'm, I'm actually interested in right now is um, by Chris Brogan, Trust Agents, Using the Web to Build Influence, Improve Reputation, and earn trust. Um, so it's about building your business online, pretty much. And I just got finished one of his books called um, um, Social Media 101, The Tactics. Uh, hold on, let me, don't quote me on it. Oh, yeah, Social Media 101. Um, oh, yeah, Tactics and Tips to Develop Your Business Online. So he does a lot of stuff about online businesses. And um, it was really interesting, that social, that, that social media one. So I wanted to buy, I'm going to get his book called Trust Agents, and I'm going to read that. It could be yours for free today if you go to audiblepodcast.com slash techwithmike. That's audiblepodcast.com slash techwithmike. And you know what? Just go there. It's free for two weeks. You can keep the book if you don't want it. Audiblepodcast.com slash techwithmike. 
that's all I have for today. I really do appreciate everybody listening and downloading the shows every week. Like I said, I'm going to try to get the shows out every week. We get some good guests going on, coming on the show soon. We have the, um, the person who wrote Evernote Essentials. You know how I'm a fan of Evernote? Well, he's going to be on. Um, his name is Brett Kelly. He wrote the book for Evernote. And, well, you know what? When he's on, we'll, we'll get a full story. I think that's going to be, uh, I forget when he's going to be on. I think it's in the week or two. So keep your ears and eyes open for that because that's going to be a really interesting show on on um, what happened when he bought when he when he created the book, and um, he he'll tell you the stories. But um, yeah, so we have that. We have um, the founder of a, uh, a new iPad app called SpringPad. We have a lot of things going on coming up. I'm trying to book some guests. Please send me or call in your voicemail number at 508-372-0123 and leave me your suggestions, your comments on the show that you just saw, um, topics that you'd like to hear or see on the show. I'm here to give you the information to help you make a better decision about your daily life on the Internet with tech gadgets and everything else having to do with technology. But as with all good things, they have to come to an end. So until next time... Help you later.